it always will. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. Who wants to walk the desert? Hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. It's a Somehow, you know what it is. A caprice to make a motor carriage. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. It says, whirling in rags, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Was this not the same Elo that founds empires and lays waste to cities, virile, uncaring towards the little things? Probably not, no. Hot water sprays from the faucet's base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just a vague impression of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really, all recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in, has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror, a boat. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. It's not. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. 
You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? You should check yourself for a pulse, superstar. From here it looks like a cadaverous spasm. You find no sign of life on your swollen neck. However, putting your hand on your chest reveals an irregular heartbeat. You appear to be alive for now. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. If it's your friend, why was it up there? Who ties their friend to a ceiling fan? Maybe this thing is dangerous somehow. An ominous foreboding feeling fills you as you look at the tie. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. Good, they're balanced, comfy, feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. The 
young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Uh, no. The young woman shakes her head slowly. Officer could be an artistic statement. You're already prone to those. No, you're a police officer, sir. I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. You have no doubt about the drinking. But do you strike yourself as a tight-lipped drunk? She must have heard something. She nods. There's a mercenary out back. He's been hanged. The body has been there for a week now. The locals probably got tired of it and called the cops. I didn't mean to overwhelm you with information. You seem a bit... lost, officer. Could it be because of the drinking? Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. The words have already left your mouth. <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on. Say it again. Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more time. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Something stirs in you as she's about to go. Call it an instinct, a need. The need to ask questions. It's like you've said the words a million times before. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Yes. You're in a hostel, sir. We are in Revachol. Revachol is the disgraced former capital of the world divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, she is central to our moment in time. You sure look like you're from Revachol. Revachol parties. Her accent suggests she is not from around here. She's from Aranye, another part of the world. It's 51. The current century? Centuries don't have numbers, they have names, and this is the current one. Civilization has existed for 8,000 years, sir. You're right, there is nothing funny about civilization. There was the usual ruckus, loud disco music. I couldn't say. It's impossible to hear people speaking from over here. Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestration prime among them. Oh, that. Yeah. Whoa. The less said about OO, the better. OO were huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course. Like, seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. I don't know about that. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped, and there was a change of pace. A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of the time, you were yelling along to it. Yes, there was a church in there, a really small church like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. That it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a wounded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. 
Yes. It was very cool. It's impossible to say whether she's being sarcastic or really means it. Then you started screaming and trashed the place. A window was smashed. The tape player, probably. The song stopped. And furniture, too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think uh, you passed out. There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then. Around four or five. And that was it. Glad to have been of assistance. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door is closed. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Still no answer. Still nothing. thought it was obvious.
great skua. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this.
There is a general store nearby, but as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Talk to the manager, then we go out back and take the body down. After you, officer. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place? Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Precinct 41? Are you kidding me? It's you. It's obviously you. You smell like liquor. And you're orange. See? Everyone agrees it's your color scheme. We're on the right track with this name thing. Is this what you get when you call the police now? We've been waiting for a week here. Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Yes, of course. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call, correct? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous questions, which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they, if he doesn't know? Uh, oh, people are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. The locals, the customers, the people who eat here, a lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it.
What? What are you, a chauvinist then? Ha! He smiles until he realizes his comeback wasn't very good. Then he frowns again. Let's go. Not so fast, Mr. Feminist. You owe me 130 real. No one is saying the multi pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely imagination. But. As you blow this joint, behind you, a whiny voice shouts. Real mature, man. Real mature. What do you want to know? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a... a pissing competition. You don't know? I assumed you were in on it. That's good. It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Maybe you can tell me what you do know, to help me narrow it down a bit. Then you are not that far behind, actually. Do you want me to brief you? Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling and rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. A security guard or worker of some sort hired by Wild Pines. This was just hearsay from Martinez, of course. We need to find out the truth. They didn't identify themselves in any way. The tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The Dock Workers Union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. Just to be clear, we are police officers. It's our job to find the killer. That's the case. Uncover and arrest the killer. No, it's not a particularly mysterious case. The deceased is a security guard for a corporation involved in a labor dispute. It doesn't take a DeLorean polymath to put the pieces together. I just don't see the case getting more mysterious than that. There was some interest in this case at my station, but not for the reasons you have in mind. You seem to wish there was a... Good point. Martinez is famed for its occult sex murder rights. We'll get on it immediately. The weary tone is the surest indicator that the lieutenant is being sarcastic. That's commendable. Was there anything else? It can still be an other world.
paraplegic. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height or a grenade explosion. No, dear. I'm not quite that old, although I was injured in the line of duty. Nothing so glamorous, dear. Though when I was young, I dreamt of planting the Revacholian flag on some figurative peak. I was a training and development manager at a rapidly expanding mail order shoe company. You'd think it would be a safe job, but I had to be everywhere, and, well, once I happened to be under some faulty scaffolding. I was lucky. This was almost 20 years ago, and I was compensated exceptionally well. One can only dream of such payoffs nowadays. No problem. Whatever do you mean? Ah, yes. Probably roll with me by the Fletchers. People often quote the Fletchers at me. Morel says it's my theme song. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. You know where we are, right? That's right. In a hostel called the Whirling in Rags, to be precise. Yes, great. See? We're getting somewhere. What else do you know about our city of splendor? Tattered as she may be. How would I even begin to tell you? Revachol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revachol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world. It has seen better days. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Oh, sweetie. It's really not. There used to be people who thought that way. Other people who wanted those things, but... They all went extinct. Revachol is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own, and certainly no dictatorship of the proletariat. But they still have cops. Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain.